Scene 8. Channel their inner Zen. Simplicity is the ultimate sophi sophistication. Steve Jobs, quoting Leonardo da Vinci. Simplicity is one of the most important concepts in all Apple designs, from computers to music players to phones and even to the retail store experience. As technology becomes more complex, Apple's core strength of knowing how to make very sophisticated technology comprehensible to mere mortals is in ever greater demand. Jobs told a New York Times columnist writing a piece about the iPod in 2003. Apple's design guru, Johnny Eve, was interviewed for the same New York Times article and noted that Jobs wanted to keep the original iPod free of clutter and complexity. What the team removed from the device was just as important as what they kept in. What's interesting is that out of that simplicity and almost the unashamed sense of simplicity the, and expressing it came a very different product. But different wasn't the goal. It's actually very easy to create a different thing. What was exciting is starting to realize that its difference was really a con consequence of this quest to make it a very simple thing, Eve said. According to Eve, complexity would have meant the iPod's demise. Jobs makes products easy to use by eliminating features and clutter. This process of simplification tra translates to the way Jobs designs his slides as well. It's laziness on the presenter's part to put everything on one slide, writes Nancy Duarte. Where most presenters add as many words as possible to a slide, Jobs removes and removes and removes. A Steve Jobs presentation is strikingly simple, visual and devoid of bullet points. That's right, no bullet points, ever. Of course, this raises the question would a PowerPoint presentation without bullets still be a PowerPoint presentation? The answer is yes, and a much more interesting one. New research into cognitive functioning, how the brain works, proves that bullet points are the least effective way to deliver important information. Neuroscientists are finding that what passes as a typical presentation is usually the worst way to engage your audience. The brain is fundamentally a lazy piece of meat, writes Dr. Gregory Burns in Iconoclast. In other words, the brain doesn't like to waste energy. It has evolved to be as efficient as possible. Presentation software, such as a PowerPoint, makes it far too easy to overload the brain, causing it to work way too hard. Open PowerPoint and the standard slide template has room for a title and subtitle or bullets. If you are like most presenters, you write a title to the slide and add a bullet, a sub-bullet, and, and often a sub-sub-bullet. The result looks like the sample slide on figure 8.1. This slide format gives me the willies. It should scare the heck out of you, too. Designers Gar Reynolds calls these creations slide humans and attempt to merge documents with slides. People think they are being efficient and simplifying things, according to Reynolds. A kind of kill two birds with one stone approach. Unfortunately, the only thing killed is effective communication. Reynolds argues that PowerPoint, used effectively, can complement and enhance a presentation. He is not in favor of ditching PowerPoint. He is, however, in favor of ditching the use of ubiquitous bulleted list templates found in both PowerPoint and Keynote. And it's long past time the realized that putting the same information on the slide in text form that is coming out of our mouth usually doesn't help. In fact, it hurts the message. Creating Steve Jobs-like slides will make you stand out in a big way, if only because so few people create slides the way he does. Your audience will be shocked and pleased, quite simply, because nobody else does it. Before we look at how he does it, though let's explore why he does it, Steve practices then Buddhism. According to biographers Jeffrey Young and William Simon, Jobs began studying Zen in 1976. A Zen Buddhist monk even 
officiated at his wedding to Lauren Powell in 1991. A central principle of Zen is a concept called Kanso, or simplicity. According to Reynolds, the Japanese Zen arts teach us that it's possible to express great beauty and convey powerful messages through simplification. Simplicity and the elimination of clutter is a design component that Jobs incorporates into his products and slides. In fact, most everything about his approach to life is all out Zen. In 1982, photographer Diana Walker took a portrait of Jobs in the living room of his house. The room was huge, with a fireplace and a ceiling to floor windows. Jobs sat on a small rug on a wooden floor. A lamp stood next to Jobs. Behind him were a record player and several albums, some of which were strewn on the floor. Now, Jobs could surely have afforded some furniture. He was, after all, worth more than 100 million when the photographer was taken. Jobs brings the same minimalist aesthetic to Apple's products. One of the most important parts of Apple's design process is simplification, writes Linda Kani in Inside Steve's Brain. Jobs says Kani is never interested in technology for technology's sake. He never loads up on bells and whistles, cramming features into a product because they're easy to add. Just the opposite. Jobs pairs back the complicity of his products until they are as simple as and as easy to use as possible. When Apple first started in the 1970s, the company's ads had to stimulate demand for computers among ordinary consumers who frankly didn't quite see the need for these new devices. According to Kani, the ads were written in simple, easy-to-understand language with none of the technical jargon that dominates competitors' ads, who, after all, were trying to appeal to a completely different market. Hobbyists Jobs has kept his message simple ever since. The influential German painter Hans Hoffmann once said, the ability to simplify means to eliminate the unnecessary so that the necessary may speak. By removing clutter, extra extraneous information from his products and presentations, Jobs achieves the ultimate goal, ease of use and clarity. Macworld 2008, The Art of Simplicity to gain a fuller appreciation of Jobs' simple, slight creation, I have constructed a table of excerpts from his Macworld 2008 keynote presentation. The column on the left in Table 8.1 contains his actual words, and the column on the right contains the text on the accompanying slides. In four slides, Jobs' presentations contain fewer words by far than what most other presenters cram onto one slide alone. Cognitive researchers like John Medina at the University of Washington have discovered that the average PowerPoint slide contains 40 words. Jobs' first four slides have a grand total of seven words, three numbers, one date, and no bullet points. Let's rock. On September 9, 2008, Jobs revealed new features for the iTunes Music Store and revealed new iPod models for the holiday season. Prior to event dubbed Let's Rock, observers speculated that Jobs might be in ill health given his gaunt appearance. In January 2009, Apple revealed that Jobs was losing weight due to a hormone imbalance and would take a leave of absence for treatment. Jobs addressed the rumor as soon as he stepped on stage. He did so without saying a word about it. He let a slide do the talking. It was simple and unexpected. It generated cheers and deflected the tension. The rest of the introduction was equally as compelling for its simplicity. Make note of the words and figures on the slides in the table. The words on the slide match the exact words that Jobs uses to deliver his message. When Jobs says, we are going to talk about music, the only word the audience sees is music. The words act as a complement. If you deliver a music 
If you deliver a point and your slide has too many words, and words that do not match what you say, your audience will have a hard time focusing on both uh, you and the slide. In short, wordy slides detract from the experience. Simple slides keep the focus where it belongs on you, the speaker. Table 8.1 Excerpts from Jobs' as Mac World 2008 keynote Steve's words I just want to take a moment and look back to 2007. 2007 was an extraordinary year for Apple. Some incredible new products, the amazing new iMac, the awesome new iPods, and of course the revolutionary iPhone on top of that Leopard, and all of the other great software we shipped in 2007. Steve's slides, 2007. It was an extraordinary year for Apple, and I want to just take a moment to say thank you. We have had tremendous support by all of our customers, and we really, really appreciate it. So thank you for an extra extraordinary 2007. Slides, thank you. I've got four things I'd like to talk to you about today, so let's get started. The first one is Leopard. Slides, one. I'm thrilled to report that we have delivered over 5 million copies of Leopard in the first 90 days. Unbelievable. It's the most successful release of Mac OS X ever. Slides. 5 million copies delivered in the first 3 months. <sighs> Empirical evidence. Empirical studies based on hard data, not opinions, prove that keeping your slides simple and free of extraneous information is the best way to engage your audience. Dr. Richard Mayer teaches educational psychology at the University of California, Santa Barbara, and has been studying multimedia learning since 1991. His theories are based on solid empirical studies published in peer-reviewed journals. In a study titled A Cognitive Theory of Multimedia Learning, Mayer outlined fundamental principles of multimedia design based on what scientists know about cognitive functioning. Steve Jobs' slides adhere to each of Mayer's principles. Multimedia Presentation Principle it's better to present an explanation in words and pictures than solely in words, writes Mayer. According to Mayer, learners can more easily understand material when it's presented in both words and pictures. In Mayer's experiments, groups that were exposed to multisensory environments, text and pictures, animation and video always had much more accurate recall of the information, in some cases up to 20 years later. Contiguity principle. When giving a multimedia explanation, present corresponding words and pictures con con continuously rather than separately. Mayer advises. In Mayer's exper experiments, he exposed students to certain types of information and then tested them on what they had learned. Those students who had read a text contain captioned illustration near the corresponding words performed 65% better than those students who had read only plain text. Mayer says this principle is not surprising if you know how the brain works. When the brain is allowed to build two mental representations of an explanation, a verbal model and a visual model, the mental connections are that much stronger. Split attention principle. Mayer also advises when giving a multimedia explanation present, present words as auditory narration rather than visual on screen text. When presenting information, words delivered orally have greater impact than words read by your audience on a slide. Having too many words to process overloads the brain. Coherence principle. When giving a multimedia explanation, writes Mayer, use few rather than many extraneous words and pictures. Shorter presentations with more relevant information are more consistent with cognitive learning theories. In sum, adding 
Redundant or irrelevant information will impede rather than aid learning. Mayer says an ideal slide would contain an image along with a simple line drawing directing the eye to the area that you want the viewer to see. This is called signaling, and it's based on the scientific premise that your audience should not have to waste cognitive resources trying to find their place on the screen. Now, keep this in mind as we return to the Let's Rock event. About six minutes into the presentation, Jobs described a new feature available on iTunes. Genius. What could be easier to follow than simple line arouse pointing to the relevant area of a slide. Line drawings, few words, and a rich library of colorful images and photographs make up the majority of Jobs' slides. Simplicity, the elimination of clutter, is the theme that ties them all together. The Mac MC presentation. Critics once derived USA Today as MC paper for its short, easy-to-read stories. They're not laughing now. USA Today boasts the largest circulation of any newspaper in the United States. Readers love the colorful and bold graphics, charts, and photographs. After USA Today launched in 1982, many daily newspapers had no choice but to follow with shorter stories, splashes of color, and more photographs. USA Today became famous for its Snapshots standalone charts carried on the lower left of the main section. They are easy to read statistical graphics that present information on various issues and trends in a visually appealing way. These graphics are among the best learning tools to create more visual slides. Study them. You'll see Richard Mayer's theory in action. Statistics share the slide with ima images, making the information more memorable. For an index of USA Today snapshots, visit usatoday.com. Snapshot, news, snapindex, and dot htm dot. Table 8.3. More excerpts from Jobs' 2008 Let's Rock presentation. Steve's words. We're introducing a new feature called Genius. Genius is pretty cool. Slides. Genius. What Genius does is automatically allows you to make playlists from songs in your music library that go great together with just one click. It helps you rediscover music from your own music library and make great playlists that you probably wouldn't think of making any other way. And it really works well with just one click. Slides. Automatically make playlists from songs in your library that go great together with just one click. So that's what Genius is. Here's what it looks like. Let's say you're listening to a song, in my case a Bob Dylan song. Slides. Image of an iTunes library screen shot with a song highlighted. There is a Genius button down here in the corner. You push that and voila, you've made a Genius playlist. In addition, you can bring up the Genius sidebar that makes recommendations from the iTunes store of music you might want to buy. Slides. Animated circle appears and surrounds small Genius logo at bottom right of the screen. So how does, does all it work? Well, well, we've got the iTunes store in the cloud and we've added Genius algorithm to it. Slides. Simple cloud line drawing with Genius logo inside. So you've got your music library. If you turn on Genius, it's going to send up information about your music library to iTunes so we can learn about your musical tastes. The information is set completely anonymously. Slides. Image of iTunes music library. Arrow appears moving up from iTunes to cloud. But it's not just information from you, because we are going to combine your information with the knowledge of millions of iTunes users as well. Slides. Many images of iTunes music libraries appear alongside original. And so you're going to send your information up, and so are they. Slides. 
arrow up from original image to cloud, followed by more than a dozen arrows from other images. And as that happens, Genius just gets smarter and smarter and smarter. Slides. Genius logo in cloud replaced with word smarter. Everybody benefits. When we send back down Genius results to you, they are tailored to your music library. Slides. Arrow appears moving downward from cloud to iTunes library image. So automatically make playlists from songs in your library that go great together with just one click. That's what Genius is about. Move to demo. White space. According to Gar Reynolds, there is a clear Zen aesthetic to Jobs' slides. In Jobs' slides, you can see evidence of restrained simplicity and powerful yet subtle use of empty space. Top designers such as Reynolds say the biggest mistake business professionals make is filling up every centimeter of the slide. Nancy Duarte describes white space as giving your slides visual breathing room. Visible elements of a slide often receive the most focus, but you need to pay equal attention to how much space you leave open. It's okay to have clear space, clutter is a failure of design. Duarte says it's laziness on the part of the presenter to put everything on one slide. Dense information and clutter requires too much effort for your audience. Simplicity is powerful. Empty space implies elegance, quality and clarity. To see examples of how designers use space, visit some slide design content, contest winners at slideshare.net. Picture superiority effect. By now, I hope you have decided to gather up your current slides, especially those with bullet points, and burn them. At least burn them dig digitally by deleting them and em emptying your recycle bin, so you can never retrieve those slides again. The argument for the visual representation of ideas is such a powerful concept that psychologists have a term for it. The picture super superiority effect. Researchers have discovered that visual and verbal information are processed differently along multiple channels in your brain. What this means for you and your next presentation is simple. Your ideas are much more likely to be remembered if they are presented as pictures instead of words. Scientists who have advanced the PCE theory believe it represents a powerful way of learning information. According to John Medina, a molecular biologist at the University of Washington School of Medicine, texts and oral presentations are not just less efficient than pictures for retaining certain types of information. They are way less efficient. If information is presented orally, people remember about 10%, tested 72 hours after exposure. That figure goes up to 65% if you add a picture. Pictures work better than text because the brain sees words as several tiny pictures. According to Medina, my text chokes you, not because my text is not enough like pictures, but because my text is too much like pictures. To our cortex, un unnervingly, there is no such thing as words. Steve's love of photos. On June 9, 2008, Steve Jobs announced the introduction of the iPhone 3G at the WWDC. He used 11 slides to do so, employing the concept of PCE to its fullest. Only one slide contained words, iPhone 3G. The other were all photographs. Take a look at Table 8.4. Given the same information, a mediocre presenter would have crammed all of it onto one slide. It would have looked something like the slide in Figure 8.2. Which do you find more memorable? Jobs' 11 slides or the one slide with a bulleted list of features? When Steve Jobs introduced the MacBook Air as the world's thinnest notebook, one slide showed a photograph of the new computer on top of an envelope, which was 
even larger than the computer itself. That's it. No words, no text boxes, no graphs, just the photo. How much more powerful can you get? The picture says it all. For illustrative purposes, I created the slide in figure 8.3. As an example of a typical slide that a mediocre presenter would have created to describe a technical product. Believe it or not, this mock slide is gorgeous compared with many slides I have actually seen in technical presentations delivered by sub subpar presenters. It's a mishmash of font styling and text, not memorable and truly awful. In contrast, figure 8.4 shows one job's one of Jobs' slides from the MacBook Air presentation. The majority of his slides for this presentation looked very similar, featuring mostly photographs. He referred customers to the Apple website for more technical information. Visuals dominated the keynote, clearly present presenting a technical product in such a way as Jobs did for the MacBook Air is far more effective. It takes confidence to deliver your ideas with photographs instead of words. Since you can't rely on the slide's text as a crutch, you must have your message down cold. But that's the difference between Jobs and millions of average communicators. In business today, Jobs delivers his ideas simply, clearly, and confidently. Table 8.4 Jobs' WWDC 2008 Keynote Steve Swords As we arrive at iPhone's first birthday, we're going to take it to the next level. Slides Photo of birthday cake with white frosting, strawberries, and one candle in the middle. Today we're introducing the iPhone 3G. We've learned so much with the first iPhone. We've taken everything we've learned and more, and we've created the iPhone 3G. And it's beautiful. Slides. iPhone 3G. This is what it looks like. Turns and gestures towards screen. Audience laughs. It's even thinner than the edges. It's really beautiful. Slides. Side view of the iPhone so slim that it's hard to see on the slide and it takes up very little space. An example of using empty space to communicate an idea. It's got a full plastic back. It's really nice. Slides. Full screen view of the back. Solid metal buttons. Slides. Another side view of the device where buttons are visible. The same gorgeous 3.5 inch display. Slides. Photo of front showing display. Camera. Slides. Close up photo of camera. Flash headphone jack so you can use any headphones you like. Slides. Close up of headphone jack. S improved audio. Dramatically improved audio. Slides. Another photo from top of the device. It's really, really great, and it feels even better in your hand, if you can believe it. Slide returns to first slide view photo. It really, it's really quite wonderful, the iPhone 3G. Slide iPhone 3G. Simplify, simplify everything. Simplicity applies to Jobs' slides as well as the words he carefully chooses to describe products. Just as Jobs' slides are free from extraneous text, so are his words. For example, in October 2008, Apple unveiled a new line of environmentally friendly MacBook computers. There are two principal ways Jobs could have described the computers. The column on the left in table 8.5 is technically accurate but wordy. The text in, co in the column on the right is what Jobs actually said. Jobs replaced lengthy sentences with descriptions that could fit in a Twitter post. Simple sentences are simply easier to recall. Table 8.6 shows other examples of how Jobs could have described a new product compared with what he actually said. Table 8.5 Describing the environmentally friendly MacBook What Steve could have said The new MacBook family meets 
the most stri- stringent energy star standards and contains no brominated flame retardant. It uses only PVC-free internal ca- cables and components and features energy-efficient LED backlit displays that are mercury-free. What Steve actually said, they are the industry's greenest notebooks. Table 8.6. Possible versus actual descriptions in Jobs' presentations. What Steve could have said. MacBook Air measures 0.16 inch at its thinnest point with a maximum height of 0.76 inch. What Steve actually said. It's the world's thinnest notebook. What Steve could have said. Time capsule is an appliance combining an 802.11 and base station with a server grade hard disk that automatically backs up everything one on one or more Macs running Leopard, the latest release of the Mac OS X operating system. What Steve actually said with time capsule, plug it in, click a few buttons, and voila. All the Macs in your house are backed up automatically. What Steve could have said. Mac OS X features memory protection, preemptive multitasking and symmetric multiprocessing. It includes Apple's new Quartz 2D graphic engine based on the internet standard portable document format. What Steve actually said. Mac OS X is the most technically advanced personal computer operating system ever. Plain English Campaign If you need help writing crisp, clear sentences, the Plain English Campaign can help. Since 1979, this UK-based organization has been leading the fight to get governments and corporations to simplify their communications. The site is updated weekly with examples of the most complex, unintelligible business language submitted by readers around the world. The organizers define plain English as writing that the intended audience can read, understand and act upon the first time they read or hear it. The website has free guides on how to write in plain English as well as marvelous before and after examples. Nearly everything you say in any memo, email or presentation can be edited for conciseness and simplicity. Remember that simplicity applies not just to the words on the slides but also to the words that comes out of your mouth. Author and advertising expert Paul Arden says that people go to a presentation to see you, not to read your words. He offers this tip. Instead of giving people the benefit of your wit and wisdom words, try painting them a picture. The more strikingly visual your presentation is, the more people will remember it. Leonardo da Vinci started, stated, Simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. One of the most celebrated painters in history, he understood the real power of simplicity as does Steve Jobs. When you discover this concept for yourself, your ideas will become far more persuasive than you could ever imagine. Table 8.7 Before and after examples from the plain English campaign. Before. If there are any points on which you require explanation or further particular We shall be glad to furnish such additional details as may be required by telephone. After, if you have any questions, please call. Before, high-quality learning environments are a necessary precondition for facilitation and enhancement of the ongoing learning process. After, children need good schools to learn properly. Director's Notes Avoid, Avoid bullet points. Always. Well, almost always. Bullet points are perfectly acceptable on pages intended to be read by your audience, like books, documents, and emails. In fact, they break up the text quite nicely. Bullet points on presentation slides should be avoided. Pictures are superior. Focus on the theme per slide. 
and com complement that theme with a photograph or image. Learn to create visually aesthetic slides. Above all, keep in mind that you do not have to be an artist to build slides rich in imagery. Visit carminigallo.com for a list of resources.